So while everybody was talking about generative AI, you have to remember that robots have gotten awesome. Like, we have robots, humanoid robots doing backflips. We can, you can buy us a drone that will do an amazing selfie through the woods, right? This is a great time to be a roboticist. Of course, you know, the large language models are coming into robotics fast, and everybody's thinking about ways to connect those two together. But there are some problems that are still hard, and it's not obvious how a large language model are gonna, is gonna solve it. One of the examples that Kai-Fu Lee gave a couple years ago, which I think is still relevant today, he says, what's hard for AI? Well, one of the big ones is manual dexterity, robots doing dexterous work with their hands. But isn't that kind of the point of robots, after all, is to actually do dexterous work with your hands? Uh, social intelligence is also good, but I won't talk about it today. So if you think about you know, things that we do every day and we take for granted, I can't show you a robot doing this yet. It's incredibly hard, it's incredibly dexterous, it's using very interesting interactions between the hands, the dexterous hand and the world, okay? But we're making lots of progress. And the, let me tell you about that in a few pieces. So the first key advance, which came on the heels of computer vision really starting to work, was this idea of visual motor policies. Okay, so now we're taking big deep neural networks and thinking about the right way to connect them into control. Okay, and the representation that got us started was a very simple one where you take a pre-trained visual network, a relatively small policy network, but the key idea is that it's gonna go through a learned state representation. So in the past, we had to figure out what's the state of the world in order to plan our actions. Now we're using learned representations to plan our actions. That was a go-ahead idea for us. And it allowed robots to do things uh, that I would have previously said were too hard. What's the model that I would use in a physics simulation for that hat in order to put it on the rack? That's very hard. To be able to manipulate every possible shoe, that was pre previously very hard. To deal with the visual clutter of these things. And the visual, because we're using the cameras at high rate, the, the feedback is actually very robust, makes these systems very robust. Okay, how do we train those visual motor policies? So it started off, everybody says, let's use reinforcement learning, and that's a natural idea. It was incredibly effective in the OpenAI Learning Dexterity Project. But actually, the thing that people are leaning into more right now is a form of imitation learning called behavior cloning. It's the simplest form of behavior, of imitation learning, where you just copy the, the input to actions map from the humans, from human demonstrations. And it's interesting to see the, the winds sort of shift a little bit. This is Google Robotics, now Google DeepMind Robotics, saying that most of our methods today are actually using BC, our best manipulation systems. Okay, so we've been playing with behavior cloning with visual motor policies for tasks, again, that I would have been considered out of scope. So just rolling dough. Okay, if you, I saw a few people in their questions said they wanted uh, robots for food. We can make pizzas with robots now, with a dexterous robot, not just a factory, but actually a dexterous robot doing all the steps. The representation that you would use for, a, for the noodles uh, in a bowl, I wouldn't have known how to write that down before, but now we have solutions that work quite well. The architecture that's working best for us these days is, of course, it's based on a generative AI idea, diffusion policies, it's a diffusion models, and I'll tell you about that in just a few slides here. So the, the standard way you've probably heard about diffusion models is in image generation, for instance, where the idea is you can take a lot of images. It's very easy to add noise into images and turn it into a grainy image like the one on, the, on this side, okay? And then what you use is you use the steps that were, that were generated by adding noise to images to train the reverse diffusion to go from a random image into something that's a, a real image on the manifold. Okay, so that's the basic idea of trying to do manifold learning with a diffusion model. How does that work in a manipulation task? So this is a, one of my favorite simple tasks, and I'll, you'll see why, because um, it has a couple of nice features that makes learning the models hard. It's just trying to put the T into a known location with a simple robot with a simple finger. Okay, but the diffusion version of this now is going from an image observation. It's gonna start with a random, messy image of possible actions for the robot, and it's gonna diffuse that into a plan for the, for the policy, thinking about the actions the robot should take for the next eight seconds, okay? And then executing that seems to be an incredibly good way to learn the manifold of solutions that from human demonstrations to be able to execute at high rate on the real robots. Okay, so the reason that's particularly a go-ahead idea is that Previous solutions struggled with simple things like multimodal demonstrations. If humans were not consistent in the way they gave a demonstration, so for instance, there's a symmetry in the T problem, 
where sometimes humans would go left around the T, sometimes people would go right around the T, and you really want your architecture to be robust to things like that. Of course, it's much more subtle and more complicated tasks. But here, the diffusion policy, learning a distribution over possible actions, handles that very natively, and it trains it very effectively. So now, we, like I said, we can actually do an entire pizza. We can roll the dough, we can spread the sauce, we can grate the cheese, we can spread the cheese, you know, all the things. That's not what you would do if you were making a pizza startup, but it's a, it was a good challenge for our robots. Okay, so what, where we're at right now, this is fantastic for any one skill. If you want to train something, I mean, we haven't done shoelace tying yet, that's still hard, but, but a lot of things in that space, a lot of them were on my bucket list, are now getting crossed off for any one skill, okay? But what we don't have yet is, um, few shot generalization to new skills. Okay, so the big question is, how do we feed the data fly, flywheel? What we, what we really want is to say, I've trained a bunch of skills, I've trained n skills by whatever, you know, getting n sets of demonstrations, uh, now I wanna have a new skill that I've never seen before, how quickly can I adapt? How do we feed that, that um, pipeline and what are the scaling laws? Okay, so let me show you, there's a bunch, there's only a handful of different ways people are addressing this. People are trying to watch YouTube, people are trying to scale, the, uh, Tell the operation, I'll tell you about one of our approaches, okay? I've been investing heavily in contact simulation. So we have simulations now that are sort of state of the art in terms of simulating the physics of contact. So it's been generally agreed upon that computer game quality rendering is good enough to train a computer vision system, but it has not yet been accepted that computer game quality physics could train a manipulation system. But we're building really advanced contact simulations and seeing that sim to real transfer. We've also been continuing to, to invest in advanced motion planning and thinking about how rigorous control can be connected with perception and these generative AI models. And there's an idea that I wish I could tell you in great detail, but I'll just give you the teaser. So of a, a way of, of taking an old idea from graph theory, generalizing it to our robot case by talking about graphs of convex sets. That's only enough for you to Google the title if you're interested, okay? But we now have extremely good planning solutions that can solve big complicated robots doing time optimal, distance optimal paths in complicated collision free environments, okay, through contact even, uh, all solved with convex optimization. We can now, in simulation, feed the pipeline, generate lots and lots of great ground truth demonstrations and train a generative model. So this is just how that plays out. The student who was working on the T pushing before, he asked me at the beginning, do you have a planner that could just solve this T so I don't have to give all those darn demonstrations, it's kind of annoying. And I said at the time, I said we, didn't have, we don't have a solution. Nobody has a planner that can solve even that simple task. But now we have planners that can sort of solve that to global optimality. So maybe this is one of the bets. Maybe I can generate enough beautiful plans in simulated environments to generate the visual motor maps to replace the human demonstrations and train my generative models. Okay, so um, dexterous manipulation is still unsolved, but the progress is incredibly fast. Uh, I told you about visual motor diffusion policies, which started with imitation learning from humans, and we're feeding the pipeline with advanced simulation and planning and control. All of our code is open source, and if you wanna learn more, I've got a bunch of classes all online, and you can go and check out, especially if you care about manipulation, I've got course notes on manipulation online. Thank you very much.